Hi everyone, it's Friday, the end of another week, and that means Chats with Chelsea! Yay! So today, I am super excited to welcome one of my good pals and an awesome mentor of mine, Crystal Hobbs. Uh, so she is the founder of Reflective Marketing. So I guess we can just start with you explaining to us, you know, what Reflective is and what you do. Sure. So Reflective Marketing is a social media agency, and we help small business and personal brands get known on social media so I'm just giving us a little beer pour here you know the Friday chats with Charles beer that's how it works so this is a new one for us today I just got this one at the new yellow belly like they have like a pop-up store now or something very cool downtown so I brought a couple bottles back and this one is called Sheila and I'm not gonna try to pronounce <laughs> it Niji Nikki or no, I'm not even anyway it has like a really nice little story on it so this is really cool yellow belly I like how you did this telling a story on your beer Nice. That's something that I guess stands out not a lot of other people are doing. So we're gonna get these poured. <laughs> and one of the cool things that I find about Reflective is you guys were like super, super early into the social media marketing game. Whereas I guess like, what year did you guys start? Um, 2014. 2014. Yeah. So around like that time like I mean I don't remember seeing like that many social media That's agencies right. specifically popping up a lot of people were like looking at like what traditional marketing like we're gonna put an ad on the radio still and sure absolutely yeah it's really taken off I think uh, especially in the last couple years mm -hmm. um, but yeah I mean when I always had all my jobs pretty much were in the online marketing sphere and I was doing a business degree and focusing in marketing yeah. So, you know, for me, it was kind of a pretty natural transition, but I actually started Reflective Marketing because I was working with a small agency mm -hmm. and really enjoyed helping small businesses. Yep. And the story that many entrepreneurs have is, I lost my job. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it was, it was a real pivotal point because I always thought, that I'd eventually start a business when I had yep. all this experience. <laughs> um, but it was kind of like, well, what do I have to lose? Like, it's, it was really the yep. ideal timing. So I was fortunate enough that I started with a client list, yep. which which isn't always typical. Um, but I, I definitely learned a lot in that first year. And mm -hmm. since then, it's it's just been growing and we're working with really exciting clients and having a fun time. It's really funny that you say that because um, I'm on the Center for Entrepreneurship at Memorial, or like I was, and we had a fireside chat with Joe Tao of Hey Orca, for those of you who don't know who Joe is, which I think is like few and far between because he's just so awesome. And he kind of had like a really similar story. He was like, you want to know what? He's like, the best time to start a business is when you're like young, like kind of like fresh out of university because he's like, you're used to being poor. Yeah. He's like, you know what it's like to like live with roommates or like to, you know, be eating like Mr. Noodles for every meal. And he's yeah. like, you don't, you're not like accustomed to this lifestyle now where you have like a mortgage and kids and like yeah. so many things to pay for. And that's like him and uh, his partner. That's what they, they did. They were like, like ordering pizza and like started hey work out from like a couch I guess yeah yeah and I truly admire people who you know when they do have kids and they do have a mortgage yeah. and all this in a safe job with a nice salary I know. for them to branch out and do their own thing I think is amazing and I think as young people our biggest challenge is really like growing our network and getting the connections and the experience that we need to really succeed so it's interesting to see the different I mean, challenges like, one thing that i've noticed like being a younger person in i guess like just in business in general or like owning a business is sometimes like it can be difficult for like people who are older to take you seriously because they think that you lack mm. the experience or like you lack like the thing so have you encountered that too that's a that's a really good question. Um, I think for me, in a weird way, it has actually worked to my advantage. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are impressed when you're young and you start a business, especially if that business is something to do with technology or something that typically older generations don't necessarily <laughs> grasp. So for me, because I started a business in social media, 
it was really like, she's young, she understands what's going on. <laughs> so I think that's a little bit unusual that, you know, if you were starting a business in insurance or you started yep. a car dealership or you started, you know, business coaching that you're not going to get that same kind of reaction. Yeah, exactly. I, that totally makes sense. And I think like a big part of like what has like made you so reputable and like recognizable is you have just like this awesome presence on social media yourself. You're like the face of your business. Mm -hmm. So you did that a lot through the Connect and Thrive show. Yeah. So uh, the Connect and Thrive show kind of inspired Chats with Chels because it was just so awesome and like chatting to business owners, which I loved. And uh, anyway, so do you want to tell us about like starting that and sure. what happened, why you started it? <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, to kind of go backwards a little bit because <laughs> Um, as you said, I've become the face of my business. But when I started, I purposely started reflective marketing as this brand outside of me. Yeah. Because I did not want to be <laughs> the face of my business, yeah. which is funny now. But um, I remember I was working at a small tech company when I was still in university. And my manager there, we were working on basically... A social media strategy to help insurance brokers mm -hmm. excel at social media and that was part of our way of attracting that market and so I worked on this ebook for them because <laughs> that was the yep. thing at the time the ebooks and my manager at that time said you know we could really turn this into like webinars mm -hmm. and at that time webinars were audio only there was no <laughs> video but I remember being absolutely terrified <laughs> by this idea and you know I think whenever I talk to small business owners who are like no I can never be in front of the camera <laughs> I'm like yes you can and you will <laughs> so yeah I think um, yeah so connect and thrive really started as me wanting to showcase all the amazing business people that I yep. got exposed to. I felt like I had this network of really incredible, experienced, mm -hmm. talented people that I wanted to help them kind of create their own spotlight a little bit. And of course, for me, that also helped me to tap into each of those networks. Um, so Connect and Thrive was really about connecting people yep. and helping our audience to grow their businesses, mm -hmm. whether that was through social media or radio yep. or podcasts or, you know, Rogers TV <laughs> series or whatever. It yep. was look at all these cool people and what they've done to grow their business here's what we can learn from it. And it's so funny too, because you see like a lot of articles, I guess like on the CBC lately, and a lot of them are like doom and gloom. They're like, like Newfoundland can't keep young people and there's nothing going on here. And, but you know, just off the top of my head, like I can automatically list like probably like 20 people who have like started just these really creative, mm -hmm. awesome businesses. And I feel like even like in the older generation, they're not seeing that. They're like, you know, the oil has crashed. So like everything is like, everything's done. But I think that there's like such an emerging like technology sector here and like just like a really cool startup scene that I feel like you're not seeing else elsewhere in Canada. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I think as entrepreneurs, we hang out with other entrepreneurs. <laughs> so our world is so much more positive yeah. and optimistic. And I totally agree with you that I'm, I feel more excited yeah. than ever to be here. But I think it's a it's a different reality for people who work in the public sector yep. or who work in oil and gas or yep. work for other people that, you know, if they don't want to own a business yep. or haven't thought of themselves <laughs> in that way, it's I, I can see where some of the doom and gloom yeah. comes from. <laughs> and it's funny, I actually saw like a statistic, I think it was like this week, that it's like what, four, I think it's like 46% of the workforce or like 50% of the workforce is expected to be self-employed by 2020. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting that it's it's really growing and, and going that way. And I think in particular, um, I see a lot of individuals, like it doesn't seem to be, I don't know, it seems like there are more freelancers and more independent people popping up every day. So I think it'll be interesting to see how that 
rolls out over the next couple of years. Well, I know, like, even just working here at Common Ground, there's, uh, you know, just, like, people who are, like you said, like, they're, like, freelancers or um, one of our guests who is going to be on, uh, I'm, like, I've committed him to it now, but he actually, <laughs> um, he teaches at Berkeley from mm. Newfoundland. Isn't that, like, that to me is just, like, wow. amazing. Like, <laughs> the world is just advancing so fast. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, I guess we went on a little tangent there, but back to uh, the connect and thrive. So when Jason Piercy was on last week, one of the things that we were talking about is like getting comfortable being being live, like being like, you know, on the camera. Yeah. So he like gave some tips um, just on like, you know, looking at yourself until you're sick of yourself, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so as someone who, you know, is on camera all the time, like what are some of your favorite tips and like how you got yourself mm. prepared going from that discomfort zone to like being totally comfortable? Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, so again, when I started, it was like, I'm going to be this educational resource. Mm -hmm. I'm going to post all these blog posts and yep. all this written stuff <laughs> and that'll get people thinking about reflective marketing as a thought leader right and quickly discovered that was not working <laughs> and i think i found with us it was a little bit of a slow progression um so definitely as i began doing more public speaking that really helped because they they definitely work together it's all a performance really um but also like I would notice that when I post a photo that had me and whoever I was working with in it or different clients that those personal things were what performed well. Yep. So that naturally led into doing videos. So as far as tips, um, I would say practice, you know, I think a lot of the videos I did in the beginning were pre-recorded. Sometimes I'd just do a bunch of practice runs before I'd actually publish something. So you can start with pre-recording video, even having someone edit that into a more cohesive piece. That's actually As, how I started too, yeah. doing like the show, because I was like a little bit nervous, like what if I mess up? Like, And my first few, like I did one with Jan, uh, Leak and like Mark Pottle of West Coast Redworks and that's mm -hmm. what we did is we recorded it like not live yeah. and it was just like okay well like if something happens like if the chair breaks and I'm in it I'm not going to be like a viral sensation yeah but then like once I got used to that process I was like okay I'm ready we're gonna we're gonna go to Facebook live now mm -hmm. <laughs> and the other thing I do as well is put some structure around it so if you're going to be doing a video whether it's live or not, or even if you're going to be speaking publicly, I think it helps to outline what you're going to say without writing everything. <laughs> so don't script because yep. then you read and then you sound like a robot. But what you should do is like, okay, what's my main message or, you know, what's the title? And then what are one to three points that I want to make within that? And you can tell a story or share stats. You can add bits and pieces in it, but keep it really focused. Yep. And as far as the preparation for that, I often find I'll use symbols. So rather than write stuff out, I'll use a symbol that will quickly jog my memory about what I'm trying to say. And that way you can be natural and engaging. Yep. but you're still going to remember what you're trying to put out there. It's so funny because you guys like you guys can't see this obviously cuz you're looking at us, but <laughs> whenever I record these podcasts, so right behind the camera is a whiteboard and uh before like my guests come on, what I do is I like think about, you know, what kind of questions that I want to ask them or like and I write them on the board and it's just like kind of like point form, but the reason that I do it is so we kind of have like a course to the conversation. But a big thing for me when starting this was like, I want to be conversational. Like mm -hmm. I don't want like a, you know, strict form like Crystal. Yes. Why have you started your business? Next like, question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like to me, like that just sounds kind of inauthentic. Absolutely. So uh, that's like another, I guess my tip for you. Mm -hmm. It's whiteboard saved lives. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We also have a little comment here from Athia. Uh, Pre-recorded videos are lifesavers until you're comfortable with live. Totally. So she's totally agreeing with what we're saying. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to go back because one of the things that you said um, kind of like caught my mind because I had like a very similar experience in that when I started in my business too I was like oh I was like people want me to like make blogs with like 
the best Instagram tips and like, or like share like this like blog article from Hootsuite. But like people can just Google that. Like they, you know what I mean? Like now again, if I see something like really awesome and engaging, then I will like post it. But what happened for me is when I started making posts with like a storytelling yeah. uh, capacity, the engagement just went like, like through the roof. Yeah, I think it's it's that personal connection that they're not gonna get that same message anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. And I even noticed like this week um, on Instagram, if I post something that's like a cute, funny little like little caption, if I was like beer with Crystal, I would get like I don't know like 40 likes. But if yeah. I'm like just like feeling like so inspired by like learning from Crystal of Reflective Marketing, like then the engagement just like goes so much higher because you're like, like you said, adding that like personal, personal Absolutely. connection. Yeah. So our next uh, topic according to the board, <laughs> <laughs> um, as someone who has highlighted small business and you know, got them known on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, if I was, you know, starting my small business or like, I was like kind of like, uncomfortable with social media so far what are some of your favorite tips for small business to get known yeah I find the biggest challenge that small business owners have when it comes to social media in mm -hmm. general and even Facebook specifically is knowing what to post so I like to think about content in a few different ways um, one is breaking it out into content buckets so this is a term from Kim Garst, who's an amazing social media mm -hmm. expert, but basically looking at your business and all the different things that you could possibly talk about and putting those into buckets or categories of topics. So for example, for me as a, in Reflective as a social media agency, we might have one bucket that's social media tips. Mm -hmm. We may not have another one that's Facebook ads because that's a growing area of our business and we really want to focus on that. We might have another one that's about entrepreneurship in general because <laughs> our audience is made up of entrepreneurs <laughs> and small business yep. owners. So think about your own business and how you can divide that content into categories mm -hmm. or buckets. The other thing is laying out a theme per day of the week. A lot of clients find that really helpful because if I know that every Monday I post something motivational as an example, <laughs> yeah. then that automates a lot of the creative thinking that goes into your content. So you can, you can basically sit down and plan out your post for the week very quickly rather than having that everyday scramble of what to post and as well with all the changes that have come up with Facebook lately mm -hmm. I think it's about being really strategic about what you're posting so the big thing for Facebook always but even more so now is about engaging your audience creating those conversations and as Facebook has put it having those meaningful social mm -hmm. interactions so you should be asking questions regularly. You should be creating polls. You should be doing live video. You should be trying to get your audience to talk to you. I think that's that's really the biggest thing about how to stand out. Yeah, and I think Facebook. like one of the things that I saw too is like keeping the conversation going. And I know that like I've seen like, you know, if you like make a comment on like a business page, and you know you're like consistently like doing it but like they never acknowledge that mm -hmm. then you know eventually like the person is just gonna kind of like get tired of like I guess like helping out you know what I mean but yeah. if you like if you're like oh my gosh that pizza looks so good I mean, like if the business was like oh have you like tried it yet mm -hmm. then as a commenter you feel acknowledged but also you're gonna comment back and it's like you know driving that engagement and creating that excess conversation yeah I think it's super important yeah, we want to incentivize that. And if someone has taken the time out of their busy schedule to write on your Facebook post or send you a message or leave you yep. a review, you have to acknowledge that. Yep. Otherwise, it, it will die and then you're going to be in a pretty tough position. 
That's actually funny. One of the things that I was thinking about this week, or like I've started doing, I was like planning to do a video on it earlier this week, but I just kind of forgot. But <laughs> um, a lot of people are so quick to like go to the internet with like these like negative experiences. Mm -hmm. But I was like, why don't people do the same with a positive experience? Right. So I went to Sobeys the other day and I always have like this joke with my friends or like even just myself. And I'm like, I honestly, I feel like the Sobeys cashiers put the heaviest things in one bag like just to mess with me, yeah. so that like, <laughs> like one bag is like one bag is like flour, like bread, and then you'll have like another one with like twenty liters of pop and like <laughs> flour and just yeah. So I went to the Sobeys on Mary meeting, and the cashier actually like took the two bags and like weighed them out as she was putting stuff in wow, to okay. make sure that they were like evenly balanced. And she's like, "Are you walking?" And I was, she's like, "This bag is heavy," and I was like, "Oh no, I'm not like just in my car and up the stairs." But she like took an extra time out of her day to balance them out. And I was like, "This was just such an awesome experience for me." So I actually emailed like the Sobeys customer service with her name, and I was like, "You know what? Like this girl like went above and beyond. Mm. Like you guys should be like happy to have someone like that on your staff." And it just got me thinking, like, why aren't people doing, like, you know, the positive experience? Yeah, absolutely. And I think as a business, when somebody gives you something positive, yeah. like, shout that from the rooftops. Yeah. Because that will encourage more people to share their positive experiences. Yeah, exactly. And, like, the other thing is, too, is if I'm like leaving a review on a business page, then I get them all the time. It's like little notifications. It's like, oh, like, Crystal reviewed Olio as excellent. And yeah. that notifies them and draws like attention to like, you know, smaller businesses that like might need help. And I think that you should always like, it's like my personal, personal view, but I'm like always like leaving like reviews. And the other thing is like, if I am complaining, I'm like, I don't, I generally do it privately. Like I don't, trash yeah. them on the page but I think like a big part of it is like being constructive mm -hmm. like it's like people like going to these big rages or like oh my god like I had a pizza today and it was disgusting blah 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 yeah. but it's like instead of just saying it's disgusting like when you're emailing them like no one's gonna want to give you like a free pizza or like anything like that if you're being super rude and mm -hmm. I think it's just like suggesting ways that they can improve too and that makes it helpful for businesses yeah we actually did a blog not too long ago in the fall fall no summer about what to do when you get a negative review. Yeah, yeah. And I think so much of social media and being successful on social mm -hmm. media is understanding human behavior. Yeah. It's like if someone's upset, you need to know how to approach that mm -hmm. and to think of everything about like, what would I do if this person was physically in front of me and upset about mm -hmm. the service that they received? Or conversely, if this person was physically in front of me saying how awesome my business was. Like, yeah. wouldn't you be excited? Wouldn't you thank that person and mm -hmm. acknowledge them? That's the exact same approach you should take with your social media. And I think, like, one of the things that you said when dealing with a negative review is, like, taking the time to, like, think about what you're going to say. Like, even, like, you know, not responding like that. To, like Totally. Because uh, your feelings can be hurt, and then you might just, like give them a comment that's like not nice mm -hmm. and a lot of people I think take like an insult to their business because they put so much work into growing it as a personal slight yeah which I think is a huge problem yeah and one of the more creative things I've seen too with customer reviews mm -hmm. is people actually using them in their advertising mm -hmm. like how powerful is that for a business to make sure that their testimonials and the positive things are being seen and then for whoever that person was that gave that review, it's almost like giving them a little bit of the spotlight. So it's so funny that you say that. I went to, um, uh, I think it ended off, like Blue Bar by Mandy Woodland. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and there was this ski resort, I don't know if it was in British Columbia or something like that. And it's like known, you know, as like being super difficult. And someone I think on TripAdvisor had left them a review being like one star, like the hills are too difficult, like blah, blah, blah. And what they did is like they bought out like a full page ad in a magazine and they were like one star, hills were too difficult, like too yeah. much of a challenge. <laughs> so they just like leveraged it totally differently because their market isn't like, you know, the person who's just trying to learn how to ski. They want like the extreme 
yeah. extreme people. So I thought that was like a pretty cool case of that is cool <laughs> of I highlighting. That. I know, right? <laughs> so uh, now I guess we're gonna move on to you know our final portion of the show, which I know you guys are all looking forward to, which is the jar of awesome. So. Uh, for those of you who don't know, every one of my guests uh, pick out three questions. Uh, some of them are submitted by you guys on social media. Some of them are just ones that I want to know. And if you guys want to have your question, you know, leave it in a comment, send it in a message, and we'll put it in there. So you usually pick out like one at a time, up to, okay. and then we go up to three. I'm a little nervous. Thomas, <laughs> they're easy. Philosophical like debates. Mm. How do you deal with a negative person? I think this is very suiting <laughs> seeing what we were just yeah. talking about um that one's tough honestly i find with every year i have less tolerance for mm. negativity i just can't have it in my world um i mean when i have i think there's a difference between a negative person and a negative conversation yeah <laughs> So negative people, I honestly just tend to not have them in my life. Um, but if someone's being negative, you know, I try to be empathetic and then also try to spin it in a positive way. You know, I mean, I don't know how else you can see for me. I'm like a problem. I'm a problem solver. I'm not like, I'm like, not like overly emotional. So it's like, yeah, when people are like crying or something. I'm like, are you hurt? Are you sick? Like then we can like figure this out but some people are just like very like complaining about everything and nothing's ever good and that's just a really difficult experience to have with people yeah yeah <laughs> definitely oh what is the best piece of advice you have ever gotten oh god <laughs> i'm gonna come back to that okay. one <laughs> what's the other one what is your favorite social media channel and why Ooh. This is the first time this question has been drawn, I think, and of course it's with a social media expert, so that's yeah, that's convenient. Um, I would like to say, I mean, Facebook is definitely what we've become known for, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's a little dangerous to put all your eggs in one social media channel basket. <laughs> um, so I would more so say maybe my favorite feature. I'm really a big fan of stories. So it's both on Facebook and on Instagram now. Started with Snapchat. But I think that ability to see behind the scenes and to, it's just so much more authentic. Um, and I think it's also kind of prime real estate on both Facebook, Instagram. It's, you know, always at the top yeah. of the page. And I think businesses really haven't done a great job of leveraging it yet so that's what I got best piece of advice that one's really tough um, god I don't know so <sighs> my dad always had this quote that really pissed me off <laughs> I was a kid but now I see the value in it and I believe it was Henry Ford that says, whether you think you can or you, you can't, you're right. And that one used to drive me crazy. But now... <laughs> <laughs> now she like tells everyone she meets. It's <laughs> yeah. like random person on the street. Whether you think you can or you can't, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah, but I think, um, you know, the more my business evolves, the more I believe that to be true. Because anything I think I've truly set my mind to, I've accomplished. And I think anything is possible. If you just believe. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. <laughs> so thanks everyone for tuning in. And uh, if you're following along on YouTube or you're following along on iTunes, don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss any more of these awesome chats. And uh, next week we have David Tipton from Ocean's Learning Partnership. So we're going to be talking about the new Ocean Supercluster here in Newfoundland. Mm. So we're excited for that and we'll see you next week.